Hello, everybody. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signar, and Joe Rogan is moving to Spotify exclusively. Why? Why is he doing this? He's doing so well. This seems like an odd choice, or is it? Let's break down thoughts on this, because I see fans reacting. Most of them are positive because they support him, and they want to assume he's doing the right business decision and i'm i'm of that camp too i imagine he's doing this because he's crunched the numbers and realized well damn this must be a good deal and i mean the first answer just to get right to why i think is the obvious one it has to be money they had to have ponied up a ton of money to make him turn off his youtube channel because you got to remember if you're going to turn off a youtube channel That's not good for a channel. Now, granted, it's still his audience and him. If he decides to come back, I'm sure it could regrow. But you never want a channel to just die for a year or two or three uh, and just not have anything on it and become dormant. And then they have to shut it off. Uh, He could easily rebuild it. I think his his audience would would stay and and come back. Uh, But right alone, that there is just like, damn. Uh, But let's break down his announcement, what he did. And and I want to share some thoughts. I also want to talk about what's Joe worth? What is the podcast worth could it be more than what he's doing with Spotify? I mean, obviously, it, ha- it can't be. Why would he make that deal? But let's try and guess what do you think that Spotify deal was worth based off of what I can tell you approximately he makes off the show. And I can tell you that because I've done some pretty big YouTube channels. I know how YouTube revenue works. I've sold sponsorships, uh, big channels. I-, I can I can guess closely and also compare to sort of things online to give us an approximate of where we think he's at in his net worth. Uh, but let's first get to uh, this statement. So we made the statement. Uh, announcement the podcast is moving to spotify starting september 1st the podcast will be moving on spotify as well as uh, as well as all platforms but then at the end of the year it will be moved exclusively to spotify including the video version it will remain free and it will be the exact same show it's just a licensing deal so spotify won't have any creative control over the show they want me to just uh continue doing it the way i'm doing it right now we will still have clips up on youtube but full versions of the show will only be on spotify after the end of the year. I'm excited to have the support of the largest audio platform in the world, and I hope you folks are there when we make the switch. All right, so there's a few things that I wanna break down here because the first thing I notice is uh, the video version. I don't watch videos on Spotify. I don't know if you guys do, but that's not what I go to Spotify for. Not to say that they couldn't turn me over, but I like not only watching on YouTube, but I like the comments. I like reading the comments of the people engaging with the audience. It sort of gives you a nice distraction while you're, you know, do two things at once while you're watching the show. Spotify doesn't have that. It's a, that's that's a one red flag I have that I'm not I'm 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 not looking forward to. Uh, but beyond that, I don't know how to watch. I, I use Spotify on my phone. I, I know there is a desktop app, uh, but can you stream it? Do they have an app on like Apple TV or Chromecast, PlayStation? I'm curious to see if that will then work. Uh, elsewhere if you want to sit and actually watch one of his long interviews because they're long it's hard to sometimes watch three hours of alex jones on your phone um but what how are they going to handle that's 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 the first thing i said secondly they they mentioned how this is a licensing deal right uh it's just a license deal they won't have any creative control over the show is what they say now but does that mean they're going to be able to sell ads and bake them in uh, and add more ads is the question because you got to remember spotify is free there's a version of Spotify that's free, but there's also a version that you have to pay for, which I've done. It's 10 bucks. It's worth it. You can download things. You you don't get any ads. You can watch, listen to whatever you want. Uh, is it going to be the same? I don't know. I know a lot of people watch on YouTube and on iTunes. It's the number one show on iTunes. So uh, interesting that I Apple didn't step up and try and make a deal. They must have attempted to, to get a counter offer, but Spotify won the bidding war. Um, but uh, they want me to continue doing what I'm doing, but I'm curious if they'll add more ads, less ads. Can Joe talk about whatever he wants? Can he sell his own ads or Spotify then making all ad revenue? Um, uh, we will still have clips up on YouTube. This is key. But the full versions of the show will only be on Spotify after the end of the year. Uh, so l- let's talk about that. Because, y- again, like I said at the beginning, why would you want to lose your YouTube channel? Why would you want to just take that down after all the work he's done, which has been a lot of work, a lot of hustle, and kudos to him. Again, kudos to him and all of this. To me, this is a good thing for him. He wouldn't have done this if it wasn't worth it for him and his team, obviously. So clearly they stepped it up, but there's still gotta be a little bit of worry of, well, will this work? Will I lose audience? Will I not get as many listeners as I used to? Will that make me a little less relevant? First comparison to that would be Howard Stern. Look, I love Howard Stern. I'm a big fan of Howard Stern, but when Howard Stern left terrestrial radio, free radio, to go behind the paywall of Sirius Radio, it hurt him in a way because he wasn't as relevant anymore because you had to pay him, pay for him to hear him. Being behind a paywall sucks. Uh, and so it's smart that he's doing a platform that's free. Joe's on Spotify, which is free. 
but it's still a hassle to find, you know, get your audience conditioned to a certain place. They see the related videos, maybe they're casual viewers. And now suddenly, you know, they're not going to know unless they go to Spotify or maybe Spotify will have alerts, but unless they go to Spotify, um, you know, it's not going to be the same. Getting an alert on your phone to watch something doesn't always make you stop what you're doing to watch it. Going on YouTube, however, and be like, oh, right, here it is. That helps. So there's a, there's a worry there that he'll lose some audience. But the fact that he's able to keep his YouTube clips, that's huge, guys, because then you'll be reminded, oh, look, Elon Musk is on again. Look at this clip. Cool, I watched the clip. I want to watch the whole thing. I'm going to go watch, listen to that on Spotify. It's a smart move for Spotify to let him have it, and it's a huge cash cow for Joe to add to whatever the amount he's getting paid for this monster deal. Uh, and I want to break that down because the fact that his, uh, you'd think, oh, well, Joe's going to lose a lot of revenue by getting rid of his uh, YouTube, the show on YouTube. But let's break down the numbers. If you actually go look at what his, uh, if you go to Social Blade, which is a good uh, crunch numbers and give you a good approximation of what a channel can make. And uh, a person of Joe Rogan, his his level, he's going to make more of the higher end of the estimated earnings that are located here. It, from the low end per a 30 day, 30 day period is 26,000 uh, to 426,000. So it's going to be a, definitely at the high end of $500,000. Um, and so that that revenue of just the 30 day monthly earnings can be, uh, you know, that's for 106 million views. So that, you know, yearly, they're estimating 5 million revenue just from his YouTube earnings. Now, that's where a lot of people say, oh, that's what he's making from his podcast. But you got to remember, that's just YouTube and that's just the powerful JRE channel. And I think that's low. I think he could be making more than that easily if he's selling his own ads on YouTube. You can make whatever you want. People have sold ads for a million dollars. It's not impossible. So just one ad alone could add another six, you know, make it to six. So that's just the powerful JRE show. Now, remember, that's they're making 106 million views over there. But let's look at the Clips channel. JRE Clips, they're making 171 million views. Uh, they're making 8 million over the year, 686,000 per month. That's revenue that they're still going to make. Uh, even after getting the Spotify deal, which is massive. So bravo, dude. I don't think people realize that. And these clips being there, he can still do whatever he wants in those clips. He could probably put ads above and before those clips. He can sell whatever ads he wants on those clips. And those clips beyond just finally giving us, you know, a piece of them still on YouTube. It's important for that because there are going to be advertisements for us to be remembered, to reminded, oh, cool, there's a new one on Spotify. Anytime you jump to another platform, I'm over on Twitch now. You can support it. Go to the Popcorn Planet, uh, YouTube, uh, twitch.tv slash Popcorn Planet. The reason I'm going over to Twitch is because YouTube sucks. YouTube is a necessity because it's a search engine. Google owns it, right? You got to have your, your clips on YouTube. But any Twitch streamer who's worth their weight will tell you, you got to still be on YouTube. You got to be on YouTube because you got to promote your Twitch stream because otherwise you're not going to be found. YouTube is just a bigger platform. It's the one of the biggest. So without being on YouTube and having billboards on your channel go out there and maybe one of them or two of them hit, without that sort of thing out there, it's going to be so much harder to find new audience on sort of Spotify or Twitch right now. So smart for him to know to keep that and for smart for Spotify for him to keep that because it gives him a little extra revenue, keeps him still inspired, keeps him to have some foot in the YouTube world in case things go south uh, and allows him to really market and make sure the audience members can still come in. Because if he was cutting that down too, I'd be very worried. He would lose a lot of viewers, I think personally. But the fact that he can still advertise on the Clips channel it gives me a little bit of hope, and it also makes me realize, okay, that's probably, I hope, was a deal point of him. Well, I can't get off YouTube altogether. And I would, I, any agent, I would be like, don't you dare get off YouTube. That's just, that would be terrible to just completely jump off YouTube for three years. Uh, so the fact that he still has a foot on one of those channels, on the more popular channel, mind you, is a smart, smart, smart move. So he's already making, look, people say he's making $5 million on the podcast, but that's a lie. Because look, we, I can prove it right there. Just on this high end, $8 million, and then from the Clips channel, and then another uh, $5 million on the other channel, we're already at, uh, what is that? Uh, 8 plus 5 is 13. So <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at math. We're already at $13 million just on YouTube revenue, all right? And that doesn't factor in ads, ads on his podcasts, on iTunes, et cetera. Uh, you can make a huge, huge dollar amounts by selling those ads for whatever cost you want to. I'm sure sometimes he gets deals or he gives deals for a one-off uh, on just the iTunes version, not the YouTube version as well. You got to remember, that, but who really knows how many people are listening on iTunes? I mean, you can see it's a lot, um, but you know, how many other platforms he's on, et cetera. You can sort of get advertisers to assume it's even bigger. But the truth is it's not. It's He's got a huge, massive army of fans who will go click or buy what he tells you to. That ad 
is more valuable than a commercial. When you buy a commercial, you got to pay millions of dollars to shoot the commercial, then to edit the commercial, hire the actors for the commercial. I mean, a real build, big budget production on a commercial can cost easily a million dollars right out the gate just to shoot it. That's low end. And then beyond that, then you got to buy the time for one ad or you buy a cup package of a few ads. I mean, depending when you put it, that's another million dollars, right? So we're already out $2 million just for doing that. But now you're telling me I could read. And, and, and most of the people who watch those commercials, they're fast forward through them. They're not even really watching or paying attention. They've gone to the bathroom during the commercial breaks. But now you have telling me, I can advertise directly to Joe's fans at the beginning of the show, and he's going to tell them to go check my product out or go to my website. Dude, people don't under don't brands. I think they're finally coming around because I know he makes a lot on his podcast. That that alone is worth ten times buying a commercial during a primetime show. It'd be stupid. Digital advertisement is what it's at right now. Buying uh, pre-roll ads and streaming, etc. That's where the money. That's where the the brands want to spend their money, uh, and so he's making bank there on top of his YouTube revenue easily. So when we add all of this together, you know, what does that mean? What could the deal be worth? Let's look, poke around a little bit. Uh, there's another quote I want to sort of call out because as he did this article, uh, one of these articles I read, he talked about why he wasn't on Spotify. We're not on Spotify, and the reason we're not on it is because it didn't make any sense. They were like, "Well, we want to put you on it. It's going to be great." And I was like, "Well, how's it great? You guys are going to make money." You guys are making the money and you don't give us any. That was Joe in 2018 and he's right. Why would I just f give you this for free? You don't even offer me a revenue stream. Uh, and so Spotify, clearly, that was smart that he sort of held off because now they're like, damn, we need it. Why don't we have it? He's not going to upload it. Ugh, crap. All right, let's have it exclusively then. And then I'll, I'll open the doors for Joe to make a better deal because iTunes will at least give you some revenue off of it. Um, Spotify uh, comes as a streaming heavyweight has been looking to beef up its podcasting efforts. They recently acquired Bill Simmons Sport uh, and Pop Culture site, The Ringer, that podcast network. Uh, and they, uh, they Spotify has currently 130 million paying customers worldwide, but it wants higher profile podcasts to continue to drive subscriber editions because they need to be bigger to be honest uh we need to give listeners a reason to think of spotify when it comes to podcasts which i don't i don't think of them for podcasts i think of them for music um and uh this is part of their new strategy having shows they want and can't find anywhere else is only going to help the, us gain more users that's fact that's true um and getting Rogan as a coup for Spotify, uh, the routinely situated on top of the Apple podcasting rankings, uh, also as a cash cow bringing 30 million last year, according to Forbes. So when you go to that Forbes link, yes, that's what they quote, uh, saying that he has the number one podcast in the world, according to Apple, as claimed as much, many as 100 million, 190, sorry, 190 million downloads per month. Uh, and uh, that's just, it's, it's wild. He delivers scale and engagement. Senior Vice President as Research, he's the number one in terms of the reach of US. So, Guys, to buy an ad on the number one reach in the U.S. with that 190 million downloads per month, phew, that's money. That is money. Uh, and then when you go to Celebrity Net Worth, which does, you know, like a pretty good estimate of what people are worth. I know people run that. It's again, it, they don't know. No one knows. They're not in the bank accounts. But you can do enough research, and they've done the best sort of to gauge people's things. I know they're off, it's off sometimes, but they're more often closer. Uh, and they estimate that he's worth 100 million. Um, cause again, it's not just the podcast. He does his UFC. He's got, you know, it's a fear factor and news radio residuals are probably still giving him money. Um, but, uh, they mentioned the fact that, uh, they, uh, they, they, they mentioned the Bill Simmons podcast, which I didn't realize actually was, uh, which is smaller cause it's, it's a network versus Rogan's one. Uh, the Bill Simmons podcast network sold for $190 million up front plus 50 million per year in ongoing content costs. Uh, and so if Joe's making 30 million, I think that's low. I think based off what we just saw, I think he's at 40 to 50 million now already easy. Uh, so 30, if he's making 40, let's say he's making 50, let's say he's making 50, you, you up that cost, right? If you're Joe Rogan, and you're making this deal. You don't go in and say, yeah, yeah, 30. Yeah, that's right. No, you up, you up it. And you say it's, and, and Spotify knows this. And so you say it's 50 and so, let's say, so for 50, for three years, that's $150 million. Now you get to say that. And then. You get to also keep your YouTube revenue, which is going to give you another $8 million a year, just in that. Uh, and you're getting 150 guaranteed, at least. I think that's the minimum of what he got paid. Uh, all right, $150 million just to go to exclusive to Spotify, uh, help build it up, make like a big deal. I bet you it was more. Why would you risk it? Why would you risk everything that's working for him? Why would you risk it to make the same amount you're making? That's my thought. Why would you? I don't know why you would, but to know that they paid 190 million, uh, well, maybe it's not. Maybe they're, you know what? Maybe they are making 30 to 40, and they're making 50 to 60. So it's like 160 million is maybe what the deal was. That that'd be my guess. 160, 
that double, you know, it does double, but it increases what he would make if he just kept doing what he was doing. It gives him the security of sort of having a, a corporate owned entity that's not going around anywhere. Spotify is a legit place. It is a good place. He's reading the writing of the wall. Maybe he wanted to go with Apple, but thought, you know what? I'd rather be with the cooler. I'd rather make the, the new one cooler than just be stuck with Apple again. Um, because, you know, Apple's also in talks with Oprah and does all their Apple TV stuff. It would have made more sense for Apple TV to make a deal because they would have had it on Apple TV. But who has Apple TV? That was probably part of the deal. If I'm guessing, I would be like, I don't want to be on Apple TV. Screw that. Uh, but who's going to watch Spotify? Is that even worse? <laughs> if Apple TV said it's free on Apple TV for the show, would more people have watched it? It's all interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we will hear more. But it's curious he went with Spotify over Apple, and it's curious that Apple wouldn't have ponied up more money too. I don't believe YouTube would have paid for it. YouTube wouldn't have done that. I don't, I don't think they care. I'm sure some of it gets demonetized. So maybe that's devaluing the amount that I think he's getting because, let's be honest, YouTube sucks. And if he's talking to Alex Jones for four hours and cursing the way he does, he can't always get the right kind of revenue. Now, that being said, he can sell it. And I'm sure there are advertisers out there who know he's going to make 30 million views with <laughs> with Alex Jones, right? How many, how many, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, Alex Jones gets 20 million views. Uh, so uh, what advertiser wants, to, who cares what it's talking about? They want the, I, they want the ears. And uh, Joe's not like offensive in that way. Way Alex might be, but they're not buying Alex, they're buying Joe. And Joe's safe. And so look, these, these millions of views, they could be making a lot more off the YouTube sales, which they're doing themselves. So I, I, I make sense that YouTube wouldn't have been in the deal. They may have tried, but I, I, to me, it's again, it comes down to, and I'm curious what you guys think as we wrap this up, is Spotify the place for Joe Rogan or would have Apple been a better place? Because they have, everyone's already sort of listening to it on Apple. They could have become the exclusive home of it. They have Apple TV. Apple is a place that's going nowhere. Uh, they could have made more content deals with him. They could have probably made a whole network. Do, or do we think Apple didn't want to do that? Apple's trying to make content. They have all the money in the world. Why wouldn't have Apple stepped up and even offered more to say, no, Joe, come to us. Forget YouTube. We're going to build it over here. Apple TV will have your show. Let's do it. Um, and we'll give you another deal, to sort of a licensing deal to, to bring in to your friends to have another show. Or did Spotify do that? Well, we see more once he sort of sees how they're going. So much to speculate here. Again, to answer the question, why would he do this? you know, it comes down to money. It had to have been money and, and, and feeling confident in the company of itself to say, you know, yeah, we're going to do cool things with you. We're excited for you. That's what I would want as a creator. I would not want to wreck my baby. I would want to make sure I'm getting paid well and I'm getting respected and there's opportunity for growth. That's how someone like this will always work. Keep doing what you're doing, but we'll have opportunities to do this, this, this. You'll have some musicians come in because now you're with Spotify. We can, we can move them in easier, whatever. Uh, maybe there's opportunities he's seeing there that sort of open up the show to where he wants to take it. Um, it still seems odd, though, that Apple wasn't up up for, for bid. And I'm curious if we'll hear that. What do you guys think? Tell me down below in the comments. Hit me up on social media. Uh, also, if you uh, like the Joe Rogan show and you like what I'm doing here, uh, please go subscribe over to Hugging the Cactus, my channel, which was supposed to be up while I'm talking. Here it is. Uh, you guys can go over there and subscribe. Uh, it's a channel that means a lot to me. We do uh, interviews of people who deserve second chances. People have been canceled. People got a bum rap and uh, the media won't cover. Uh, lots of fantastic conversations that you guys can go learn of. So please uh, go over. I'm unsubscribing to show you how to subscribe. Subscribe, hit the bell uh, to all, and uh, join the conversation over in the Hugging the Cactus. And while you're at it, go subscribe here to this channel. Uh, and you can follow me on social media. Uh, we'll be live tonight. It's Tuesday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm here live, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for Nerd Wars and Change Your Mind. So come hang out with us. So much uh, fun in store for you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll be back with more content very soon. Uh, tell me what you think about this story down below. And then click some of this stuff. Bye, everybody.